Hello, I'm Nan Simonson. I decided to make some soups today and I thought, well, I'll cook one. And I thought, now nah, I'll cook two. I'm already make, making a mess of the kitchen. Why not make it worthwhile? And I thought, maybe I'll do three because I had everything I needed to do three soups, so I'm going to. I'm gonna do a lima bean stew, a Greek lima bean stew. It's Greek because it has oregano and rosemary and fennel and um, the flavors of Icario, one of the blue zones. I'm going to do a red lentil chili that has a lot of red bell pepper in it and some sweetening from dates and you'll hear more, well, you won't hear more about it. Just look for the recipe. I'm going to post it eventually because I'm going to film that one too. And then finally, I'm doing a roasted cauliflower soup and I've already roasted the cauliflower and it includes lentils that are already cooked and some potato and oh, it's going to be yummy. So watch for those. But in the meantime, this is my eight quart uh, uh, Instapot and I'm using it because I've doubled this recipe. Again, if I'm going to make a mess, I'm going to make it worthwhile. So because I was doing all three of these, I decided to chop all my onion in the Vidalia Wizard because I could put a piece of onion, whack it down. I can see how much I have in here. It was easy to do and I need the onion for the other two soups. But first, I chopped a leek. Um, look how nicely and uniformly this is chopped. I cut the leek into pieces, cut it in half, and what I found though, was that if I put the outer uh, layer face up, it kind of got stuck and it was harder to chop, so I flipped it over with the more fine layers on top, and even that was a little hard, so I put it down on the ground and stomped on it, <laughs> whatever it takes. Okay, that's not much of a t selling tool, is it? I'm not trying to sell it, I just happen to love that. Now I have my saute function on the um, Instapot, because that's part of what I love about the Instapot, and yes, you can do this in a pan. You can do this in an eight quart stock pot, You'll saute your onion, you'll saute some um, oh, garlic in there. I didn't show you that my pan, this is the, the leaf in there, is dry. There's no oil in here because I don't use, well, what I eat is whole food, plant-based, and oils are processed, and... If I'm going to eat the food, I'm going to eat the real food. Olive oil, give me olives. Uh, I don't eat the other processed oils at all. And you really don't need to and can save hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calories when you combine recipes all day long that would normally have oil that you don't use oil. doesn't mean there's no fat. There's lots of fat from things like avocado, which I had for lunch, and, and uh, sesame um, seed in the form of tahini, which I put on my salad dressings. Okay, so what's happening is um, it's starting to stick. If this were a conventional onion, chopped onion, let me show you what's in here. I'll just take the cutting blade off. Onion, I don't know if you can see how moist that is. Onion's quite moist. And when you saute it, dry saute it, um, I call it dry, and yet you add some broth so it doesn't stick, but not a lot. It browns more readily than, let's say, a leek. So I'm going to be taking more care of this leek, not to brown it. Use a little bit of my homemade stock. That's the other thing I did. I had, I knew I was going to be doing all of this. I need a, a oh, something like, let me think, six cups of stock for all of this, and rather than opening cans or defrosting what I already had, I pulled out my big stock pot, threw a big bag of frozen vegetable scraps, which I keep in the freezer, into my pot, cooked it for several hours, even when we would taken off for a little while, um, and put it on low and let it continue to simmer. And then, what I ended up with 
I don't think I can do this without pouring it on the floor. No, I can. Okay. I ended up with this beautiful pot of stock and a strainer went in here. A, yeah, strainer fits over here beautifully. Eight quart stock pot dumped it in through the uh, vegetables in my compost bin. And um, now I have stock enough for these recipes and some for the freezer. That's what you can do on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> All of this, make the stock, make a couple of soups, uh, chop a bunch of garlic, I'll mention that in a minute. And some of you have seen me talk about this tool before and you're gonna think, boy, Nan, you're a one-trick pony. You keep talking about the same thing. But it's handy, so I'm gonna show you. Why am I leaving my watch here? I wanted to say something about the chop wizard. When you are putting down a piece of onion, for example, and the grate I just took off, and you close it and you pound, that kind of percussion can be bad for a watch. I ended up loosening the minute hand of a watch and had to take it in and have it fixed. So I take my watch off before I pound it, and I put my bracelet up so I don't pound the bracelet. Just some handy tips. And so you may think, why don't you just chop the darn onion? Well. I do all the time, but if I'm going to do that much and I want this beautiful uniform cut, I'm going to do it that way. And the same thing with my red bell pepper. I chopped the red bell pepper that way and I had over a pound of red, uh, bell pepper to chop. I simply cut the bell pepper into pieces about like that, put it down, whack, 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 whole thing diced into, look at this nice little dice. Okay. Let's get on with it. So, this is cooking nicely. And why do we do this? Because onion caramelizes. When you cook it at a, and, uh, at a I was going to say slow heat. This isn't a slow heat. It's not, it's about a medium high. And that's what the saute um, feature is. But when you get a little bit of browning and it sticks to the pan a touch, and you put a little broth in, it deglazes the pan. Deglazing means that your, um, the, the, the sticky bits, the, the um, dried juice of whatever you're cooking like, we'll say um, in the case of onion, like the onion um, juice, I'm gonna call it, uh, it, it well, it literally caramelizes. It thickens, it colors, and it becomes um, a flavor enhancer. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, this is done. Well, it's not really done. I want it just a little bit more, so you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you this one more time. Here I have three recipes to do. I had a big head of uh, garlic that I got at, it's organic, big, big cloves, I peeled them, put them in here from that one clove. It may have been a clove and a half, because this is, I don't mean a clove and a half, a head and a half, because this is a lot. I've shown you before that I like this little tool because this one clove is not peeled. I can do this. Did you hear that crunchy, crunchy? I now have a peeled clove of garlic. Boom. So that can make cooking three recipes and then having some left over for the rest of the week. Kind of handy. And this is just a pull tool. Um, I get it on Amazon. You can get it from a Tupperware person. And um, what's sticking? Let's see. I think one of these pieces of garlic displaced that. No big deal. And um, there. And by pulling, sometimes you have to shake it because the garlic can be stuck in a blade. There you go. I'm not making it look as easy as I'm telling you it is. There you go. How are you doing? Are you fine? All right. That was a bunch of garlic that if I were chopping, it would be hard to get even on the top. All right. Down. I now have 
16 cloves of uniformly chopped garlic, and I really like that. This is called a mini chopper, Tupperware mini chopper, something like that. It, um, Tupperware mini chopper, okay. And there we go. I have some nicely chopped garlic. Yes, you may have seen this before, and if I have this much to do, I figured if I'm going to do it, I'll show you in case somebody is on that hasn't seen that. All right, so I have, you can actually see how syrupy the, the juice of the leek becomes. Now, this recipe called for four cloves of garlic that I've doubled it. So three cloves, sorry, I've measured this in the chop, and one clove is a teaspoon. So three cloves of garlic will be a tablespoon, but I need four. So a tablespoon and a teaspoon, well, I'm doubling. So what I need is eight cloves of garlic. So one tablespoon, three, another tablespoon, six. I'm Italian. Let's add another extra teaspoon and bring it up to nine. There. Now I have the garlic I need for my other recipes. And put the top on and let that sit. Okay, I put the garlic in later because garlic will burn. I'm gonna add to this to kind of, I'm gonna say almost toast the spices. Um, well, let me show you what I have. This is telling me that the saute function is off. Let me put it back on, okay. See, I have browned, um, and you can see a little bit of that stick well, when I add the broth, it bubbles up. Okay. Now it's telling me it doesn't have its insides. It's a smart machine. Okay. Bringing it back up again. I'm going to add, I'm just checking to be sure that I'm doing this in the order that I want to. All right. I'm going to add some carrot. And I, the recipe that you're going to see with this is not doubled. And I am doubling it, as I said, because I want lots and lots of soup for this effort. All right, I added some carrot. I'm gonna add red bell pepper. And that's not necessarily Greek. I went through my Blue Zones cookbook to see if I could see bell pepper used in the Greek recipes, and I didn't. But you know what? I like red bell pepper. And I added it anyway. Um, I have fresh rosemary, a teaspoon of it. The recipe called for a half a teaspoon of dried. Actually, I think that was two teaspoons of fresh because I, if you're getting a half a teaspoon of dried, it's at least two to three times the amount for fresh. And I didn't want it to be too strong, so I just went with a little over double instead of going for triple. And I have oregano, but we're only using, where's my measuring spoon? Well, it doesn't matter. We're only using part of the oregano now and then part of it later because the herbs will kind of sometimes diffuse and lose some of their strength. And if you add a little bit near the end, you sort of empower it. All right. Oh, this smells so good. All right, what are we adding next and next and next? We're going to be adding broth. And surprisingly, it only takes three cups of broth. So I'm going to see how much is left in here. This is my old broth. Now I have a whole pot of new broth. All right, this looks lovely. It I'm going to show you just because I think this is what makes cooking fun, to look at something like that, smell it, and think, oh my goodness, look what I've created. All right, I'm going to put in two cups, and the recipe calls for one and a quarter. I'm doubling. I like a brothy soup, so instead of making it two and a half to double it, I think I'm going to make it um, three cups of broth. 
and I'm just going to dip it in here. This is my brand new broth. I want one cup of it. You know I'm going to be dripping this across my kitchen floor. There we go. And so far you've seen that I've added no salt, and I'm not going to. I'll salt at the end. All right. And now I'm going to add lima beans. I put... This, this, the recipe calls for baby lima beans. I like the toothsomeness of a big, fat lima bean. I started with two cups of dried lima beans, and now I have what? That's probably, this is a four cup measure, probably five cups of reconstituted, not, should we call it reconstituted? Sure. They were dried, now they're not. And as I'm talking, I'm making decisions here because I'm adding the beans, I'm adding fennel, very Greek. And I bought my fennel from Trader Joe's. Two big bulbs of it are a few dollars. And you even get some of the fennel fronds. So I'm adding those, chop those up. And I am not... I'm going to show you something. The way this was written, and I've made it before, and I amended it then, I'm going to amend it again. This is what I have, just beautiful. But I want a stew that has a lot of broth. I like to get a lot of broth in my soup. I'm leaving these ingredients, artichoke heart, some lemon that will be lemon zest, to add at the very end with some more of the oregano, but um, I'm going to add enough broth to cover the top of the beans. That will give me a lot of flavor, and your recipe will show you what I've done. All right, I'm adding another, I'm gonna let it go to that, another two cups, so that what I have is a loose kind of a brothy bean. All right, cover it up, give it 15 minutes, and set it on pressure cook. Take the saute away, pressure cook, 15 minutes, and let it set. I'll be back with you, and I'll show you the finishing of this dish. Um, what's fun is I'm going to move it aside and I'm going to start with my next soup. Hello. Be back. I'm back. All right. I'm going to release the pressure. It's been 26 minutes 